Let's join our technician as he continues the job. After the bonnet is removed, the gasket that helps seal the bonnet and body can also be removed. It will be replaced later. Whenever you're replacing the stem and plug on a globe valve, it's a good idea to replace the valve seat. This is because it may be difficult to form a good seal between the new plug and old seat. In a globe valve, the part that forms the seat is usually called a seat ring. Let's see how to remove the seat ring. Our seat ring is a cup-like part in the valve body where the valve plug seats. It's threaded into the valve body. So to remove this part, we'll need to unthread it. Since the seat ring is threaded tightly into the body, we'll use a special tool to unthread it. This tool helps you get a good grip on the seat ring when unthreading. Some seat rings may be difficult to remove. Other techniques, such as use of heat or solvents, may be necessary to remove them. Check your manufacturer's instructions. Since there's a sealing surface underneath, the seat ring is designed to have a tight fit in the body. You'll need to continue turning the seat ring until it is completely loosened. The seat ring can now be removed by hand. Now that all the parts are out of the body, we're ready to go to our bonnet assembly and start disassembling the parts that are still inside the bonnet. We'll begin with the packing. Let's join our technician. The round piece in the center is a packing ring. At this point, we're ready to remove the old packing. Remember, packing goes inside the stuffing box and fits around the stem. When the stem moves, the packing serves to guide the stem and protect against leaking around the stem. New packing should be installed during an overhaul to ensure the best possible operation of the valve when it's reinstalled. This valve has a metal spacer under the first few rings of packing. The spacer is then removed. Spacers are used as fillers when the system requirements don't call for the stuffing box to be completely filled with packing. Remember to use the correct amount of packing when reassembling. Be careful when using a packing removal tool. The pick at the end should be placed directly into the packing rings. It's important to avoid touching other parts of the packing assembly. If the stuffing box was scratched or scored in any way, that damage could interfere with the sealing surface between the packing rings and the stuffing box. In order to prevent leakage in globe valves, it's important to keep a good seal between the packing rings and the wall of the packing box. The technician continues this procedure until all the packing rings are removed. So at this point, our technician has completed the disassembly of the globe valve. Once these parts are disassembled, they should be cleaned. We'll start cleaning with the valve body. First, we'll clean the body studs. Let's join our technician. Before we begin, a covering is placed over the opening to the valve body. This covering will prevent particles dislodged during the cleaning of the studs from falling into the body. To clean these body studs, We'll use a special thread cleaning tool. Each side of this tool is designed to be used with different sized threads. The ridges of this tool fit into the grooves of the threads. The tool is used to remove burrs, rust, dirt, and other material from threaded surfaces. This tool is an effective cleaning device as long as you're careful to match up the correct size of the thread. When doing the actual cleaning of the threads, take your time. Make sure the tool fits properly into each thread and be sure to clean the entire thread. These particular studs are not that dirty, but often they get rusty and much dirtier than you see here. By doing the cleaning job well, it will make it much easier to install the body stud nuts later. 
After using a metal thread cleaning tool on the body studs, our technician will do a final cleaning with an approved solvent. The solvent will remove material that came loose from the filing or any remaining dirt, processed fluid, or rust. Let's see how to do this. In addition to easing the bonnet assembly reinstallation, there's another reason why it's important to get these threads clean. Later on, during the reassembly, we'll be applying some anti-seizing compound and the compound adheres better on a clean surface. Each thread is sprayed with solvent and wiped clean. This takes a while, so let's move on. After the body threads are clean with the solvent, the covering that protected the opening of the valve body can be removed so we can clean the areas inside the valve body. He'll start by cleaning the groove where the gasket fits in. The gasket that goes here provides a seal between the bonnet and the body. It's important to wipe this area very clean so you'll get a good seal. The next area to be cleaned is the seat ring area. When the valve is assembled, it is important to have a good seal around the seat ring. Cleaning is a good practice to prevent any interference with the seal. We've started with a wire brush to remove hard remnants of sealing compound, rust, or any other foreign matter. Care will be taken to clean the shoulder inside the valve body where the seat ring rests so we'll have a clean surface when we apply sealing compound here later. Also, it's important to clean the threaded areas in the valve body so the new seat ring will thread properly. Any dirt or foreign material should be removed following facility procedures. This may require flushing or vacuuming the valve body. Reusable parts also need to be inspected and cleaned. In particular, be sure to clean the packing flange, the packing follower, and the spacer. So we've seen how to clean the parts of a globe valve. Proper cleaning is important to ease the reassembly of the valve later on and to make sure that valve operation won't be affected by any foreign material inside. In the next segment, we'll see how to begin an overhaul procedure called lapping. So well, now, stop and review the information in your text. In the last few segments, we saw how to disassemble a globe valve and how to properly clean its parts. In this segment, we're going to see how to start a procedure called lapping. One of the main reasons for doing maintenance on globe valves is unacceptable leakage in the valve. Since the cause of the leakage is usually improper seals, we'll need to know how to properly maintain the valve sealing surfaces. An important seal in a globe valve is the one formed when the valve plug and seat mate. And during the overhaul, we want to make sure these two parts mate correctly so unacceptable leakage can be avoided. Lapping is a procedure that is used to mate surfaces of the plug and seat and improve the seal. Lapping involves use of an abrasive compound ground between the seat and plug. Therefore, the first step in preparation for lapping is installation of the new seat ring if the old one was removed. Let's join our technician as he replaces the seat ring in the valve. Before inserting the new seat ring, a sealing compound will be applied. This compound is used to seal the seat so process fluid can't leak through. Also, use of the sealing compound will make it easier to remove the seat ring next time this procedure is necessary by providing protection against seizing. A brush is a good tool to use when applying this compound. 
Be sure to apply enough compound to cover the shoulder surface and the grooves of the threads on the seat ring. And make sure you use a sealing compound that is compatible with your process. After the sealing compound is applied to the seat ring, the ring can be inserted into the valve body. When doing this, make sure you get the thread started properly in order to avoid cross-threading when tightening the seat ring in. You can use your fingers for the first few turns to get the threading process started. The seat ring is then tightened with the tool you saw earlier. Be careful when tightening to avoid damaging any part of the seat ring. Any damage to the ring could distort its shape and result in leaks around the seat. It's important to get the seat ring tightened firmly into its seat to prevent any leakage. But don't over-tighten. Over-tightening will damage the threads in the seat. When you feel the seat ring is threaded tight, you can stop turning and remove the tool. After reinserting the seat ring, we're ready to prepare our valve for lapping. Since we'll be using a new stem and plug and a new seat ring, our procedures call for a two-stage lapping process. This will be done by inserting the plug into the seat and turning it. In the first stage, we'll use medium-grade lapping compound to grind the sealing surfaces. Then we'll use fine-grade lapping compound to finely polish the plug and seat. When lapping an old plug that's worn or damaged, you may need to start with a heavy-grade compound. Be sure to check your procedures before beginning the job. Now let's join our technician as he begins lapping our valve. We're getting ready to lap the new plug and seat. The technician checks to make sure that he's using the right compound. As I said before, our procedure call for a medium-grade lapping compound to start the job. He's ready now to apply the compound to the plug. A clean brush is used to apply the compound. It's important to apply it uniformly so that the sealing surface where the plug and the seat mate will be ground evenly. You can apply the compound uniformly by dabbing it on at approximately equidistant points around the plug sealing edge. Put enough compound on so that the plug sealing surface will be totally covered after the lapping starts and the plug is turned in the seat. But avoid putting too much compound on since it would interfere with an even lap. Now you're ready to insert the stem into the bonnet. The bonnet will be used during lapping as a guide for the stem. After the stem has been inserted into the bonnet, you're ready to place the bonnet into the valve body. When you do this, be sure to support the stem with your hand. There's nothing inside the bonnet to hold it in place. Be sure to lower the bonnet carefully into the body. Then lower the stem and plug into the seat. Take care not to hit any surface within the valve so that the lapping compound remains evenly spread on the plug. We'll be using half of our body stud nuts to hold the bonnet and body together. They only need to be finger tight at this point because we're not concerned with creating a seal. After the bonnet is fastened to the body, some of the old packing rings are reinserted over the stem and into the stuffing box. They'll help to guide the stem when we lap. Our manufacturer suggests using three of these or about half the amount of packing that is normally used. We're not concerned about a seal here. These packing rings are just used for guiding the stem during the lapping procedure. To lap, we'll have to turn the stem. A special tool is used to help us do this. Ours is a round wheel-like handle that fits over the stem. A nut and washer are used to support the tool on the stem. When the tool goes on the stem, it's carefully...